finally get myself together here. So, good morning. My name is Adam. I'm one of the elders here at Beacon Church, and this part of our service is a responsive reading where we take time to together consider and then confess the faith that unites us as a body in Christ. We use the structure of the New City Catechism on the screen behind me there. Uh, a couple weeks ago, part of what we considered was the question, why did God create us? And in Isaiah 43, starting in verse 6, God declared, Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth, everyone who is called by name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The point here being, we were created to glorify God. That means we're to magnify God, right? Not like a microscope, which takes something microscopic and makes it so we can actually see it, but rather like a telescope. A telescope takes something that is enormous and magnificent and makes it appear more like what it really is to our eyes. And this is part of how we can bear the image of God forth into creation. And Jesus, of course, most fully exemplified this. In John 14, verses 8 through 10, we read that Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it's enough for us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Because as Paul wrote in uh, Colossians 2, verse 9, that in Jesus, the, full, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. So Jesus most fully bears forth the image of God and so glorifies him. This week, we follow with a very naturally, a natural question. You know, if we're supposed to glorify God, well, how do we do that? How can we glorify God? And I want to consider from John chapter 15, starting at verse 8, uh, where Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified. See why I picked this passage, eh? By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. So God is glorified, how? But when we bear fruit. But of course, how do we bear fruit? Well, actually, if we look a few verses earlier, starting in verse 4 there, uh, Jesus says, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, Unless you abide in me, or yeah, sorry, let me find my place here again. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. All right, so we need to make our abiding place, our abode, our home in Christ, which we can only do when we recognize first what God has said about our sinfulness, and then we repent. We turn from our sins to God through Christ Jesus, through the redemption he freely offers us through Christ. We come to recognize the love that God has shown us through his son, and we rest in his love. We trust in his love. But Notice, of course, from this passage, what does lo love look like? Well, Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So resting on Jesus' love involves obeying him, right? Laying aside the sinful desires of our flesh and desiring what he wants. Because if he has created in us a clean heart, our desires will shift. Not perfectly, not fully, but substantially. Consider what Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus. Uh, For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I want to draw out here how Jesus and Paul are very well aligned, right? 
We're not saved by good works. Good, it's not that good works are the cause and salvation is the effect. Rather, good works come as a result of an effect of being saved. Right? So salvation is the cause. Good works are the effect. They are out of gratitude for what God has done in response to his love to us. So we cannot bear forth truly good works unless we abide in Christ, in his love, because his love changes us and it sanctifies us. And also, I think it's important to consider that God's moral character is imprinted on his law. It's shown forth through his law. So by keeping his law, by keeping his commandments, we're conformed to his image, right? This is how we can image forth in the world what he is really like. Or in other words, how we can glorify him, show the world really what he is like. And the last facet from what I read in John there is that if we, when we are saved, then abiding in Christ's love by obeying his commands will bring us true, lasting, and full joy. Right? Jesus closed that passage saying, These things I have spoken to you, why? That my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. So this is how we can glorify God, is by enjoying him, by loving him through his son, Jesus Christ. So at this point, I'm going to invite you to stand to join me. I'm going to read the question at the top, and I invite you to uh, join me in reading the answer beneath. How can we glorify God? We glorify God by enjoying him, loving him, trusting him, and by obeying his will, commands, and law. I'll just take a moment here to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving goodness toward us. Again, Lord, that seeing a fallen sinful humanity who desires to be equal with you, who thinks equality with God is something to be grasped, who fell and sinned, Lord, yet you are merciful. You have sent your son, your son who did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but rather emptied himself. And by emptying himself, he has purchased our redemption. Lord, help us then to rest in him, in the salvation you freely offer us through him, not by works, our works which at best are self-righteous, and fall short of the glory of God, but rather, Lord, help us to rest in the salvation you've offered us through your Son, that we might bear forth in fruit in keeping with that salvation, fruit which glorifies you, which honors you through changed lives. Lord, help us, even having been saved years ago, if that is the case, help us still to abide in your love, not to leave that love that we had at first, and so become cold and heartless and fall into legalism, just obeying your, your law and your rules. But Lord, help us to stay rooted in your love for us and out of gratitude then to obey your law and so glorify you. For you pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.